Folks in the medical affairs industry really don't know what to do with all the information. Lots and lots of opportunities, but where and how to begin. Uh, there's all these new technologies in terms of AI and how to access uh, the right information to answer the right questions. How to really be responsive to different stakeholders is another thing that we hear a lot. That and really having to be thoughtful about resources. Really how best to use uh, the information that's out there and to use what they can with limited resources. You want to try to get it right the first time instead of uh, putting together an initiative and have to reframe or relook at and identify after the fact, oh, uh, we put together this study, wow, I wish we could have asked more different types of questions in that first time around as opposed to, you know, um, thinking about that after the fact. When they are developing their brand plans and their marketing strategies, there has now been some scrutiny on the, call it the shelf life of, of the clinical data coming out of the pivotal trials. You know, if the whole point of the marketing strategy and a lot of the peer-to-peer -peer physician education programs are really designed to educate about unmet disease states and unmet medical needs, um, you know, there's, there's a perspective that the evidence is generated in the pivotal trial, you know, is, is valid for a certain period of time. And then that data and that information starts to, starts to expire. And I think that's putting a lot of pressure to start thinking about a sort of a consistent evidence generation strategy. Fundamentally, it's really important to understand the population that you're really most trying to yep. impact, right? Agreed. So where and how that impacts studies, you know, and the questions you're asking uh, related to real world data mm -hmm. and understanding the types of populations you're going to focus on and uh, impacts your study design, right? How you set up who gets included or not included in your study. Uh, so that's inclusion exclusion criteria. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what are you looking at as far as outcomes, right? Because if you bring in the patient voice or the patient perspectives, sometimes it's uh, a clinical outcome, but sometimes if the data are available, are there symptoms? You know, are there things that are important to the patient that are as, if not more important than what might be in patient, uh, important to providers and or payers? So Great. I think those are yeah. important things to consider for sure. The uh, clinical outcomes and the economic uh, data have to go hand in hand. You mm -hmm. need to sort of think about what outcomes are you looking at in terms of healthcare utilization and you know hospital stays or doctor's visit. What's relevant? What are the types of questions you want to be mm -hmm. sure you answer? Our real deep strength is around market access and evidence generation. Helping clients understand the evidence generation or evidence needs of their product throughout its life cycle and developing a plan to gather that. Once that information is gathered, we have the capability to help our clients deploy that information out in the commercial realm as well as out in the medical community. Um, and that being in the form of peer-reviewed uh, publishable research that we support our clients on, or if it's a part of, you know, kind of the physician targeting strategy for a commercial sales plan. Please visit our website to learn more about how Baker Tilly can help your organization uncover opportunities for success.